2016, yeah. I myself is a care worker and an organizer with Migrant Workers Alliance for Change, which is a member of Migrant Rights uh, Ontario, uh, Migrant Rights Network Ontario. Um, I've been in your shoes, you know? I haven't seen my kids for almost eight years now. And um, I haven't, I wasn't uh, eligible to apply for PR for many years. And it took us years to fight for, uh, to fight for the right to apply for PR. And years to wait for the decision. And it's not only me, there's a lot, there's thousands of us, right? I had to I had to show that I have high levels of education just to apply for permanent residence. This is so unfair. There's a lot of us. Shane! Today I have my status. Although it took me years to fight for my status, I am still here fighting for all migrant workers to have our who are all either waiting for their decisions or who have lost their status because of this unfair system. Before we begin today, I want to acknowledge that we are on the territories of Mississaugas of the Credit. These lands that we have been, that have been defended by the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, cared for by the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples. We have the collective responsibility as settlers, as guests, as visitors, along indigenous people who to take care of the land. And that is why we want you to join the march for the land on September 27 at noon at Grange Park. with the Land Alliance of Five First Nations that are marching to end unwanted mining activity on their territories. Thank you. We stand in solidarity and unity with our indigenous community, our migrant workers community, our Black Lives communities, immigrants, refugees, migrant international students, our allies, our friends from all across the country, standing together to fight for justice and equality. We are fighting for permanent resident status.
to all undocumented people who already live here and then ensure permanent status for all migrant students, workers, and families. Let's get it done. on the cabinet agenda this week. He could announce the program this week if he wanted to. Justin Trudeau, do not delay. Let's get it done. 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 Everyone knows this is the right thing to do. Over 500 organizations from across the country have signed on to support Status for All. This action today is in 15 cities. We have over 200, yeah. We have over 200 organizations. And last week, the United Nations Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of Slavery asked Canada to give permanent residency. And I know you know it, do you all agree? that tomorrow when all those politicians go back to work in Ottawa after their long holiday that they hear it too right we want to make sure that they've heard from thousands of us that this is something that there is so much support for across the country now every one of you got a flyer today raise it up do you guys have got a flyer today from our organizers on it is a QR code and our website, statusforall.ca. I want you to take a moment, uh, scan the QR code, or go to Status for All and send an email. Even if you've done it before, do it again. Do it again, because we want to make sure all of those cabinet ministers and the prime minister hear us loud and clear, right? Because we are fighting for? What are we fighting for? Are we going to give up? No. We're not going to give up. Have they heard the last of us? No. Absolutely. We are fighting and we're not going to give up. And here's Joey. We are fighting for regularization for all undocumented people, who is part, which is part of a fight for status for all migrants, including workers, students, and refugees. Now, let's all welcome our first speaker, who is, uh, her name is Lourdes de la Peña. She is a former um, mushroom uh, farm worker and an organizer with Migrante Ontario. Let's all welcome Lourdes. In December 2012, I arrived in Canada on a work visa. However, due to illicit activities of a recruitment agency run by Jeanette Mosquito, I lost my legal status. Consequently, I have been compelled to take a low-paying jobs with no benefits, endure long hours, work in hazardous conditions, and even face abuse while employed in a mushroom farm and now at a meat factory. Along the way, I have encountered other undocumented workers who have also experienced exploitation. In addition to work challenges, I have been separated to my families for more than nearly 11 years. 
it, this has caused me significant homesickness, anxiety, and worry, which have been especially difficult to bear during the pandemic. The stress and exhaustion I have endured have taken toll on my health, resulting in unstopped bleeding due to fibroids. Regrettably, I lack access to health care and must cover the expenses for my medical checkups. Many of us undocumented workers grapple with fatigue, sleepless night, and emotional distress as we navigate the difficulties of deteriorating health and unjust circumstances. Despite my hard work, I have been denied basic human rights, including sick leave and overtime pay. Additionally, I have pre faced prejudice and discrimination with many wrongdoing, wrongly perceiving me as a criminal or a burden to a society simply because I am an undocumented worker. This de degrading treatment is both unjust and dehumanizing. Living without legal status has made us feel helpless and vulnerable. We live in fear, unable to perform even routine, routine tasks like buying groceries. We ans an anxiously respond to the unregistered phone calls and even, even, and even a single knock on our door. It gives chills to us as we fear that it might be a CBSA or a police coming to arrest for us. Shame! This is wrong and we need it to stop. We're not here to steal anyone's jobs or cause problems. We want a fair chance to live and work in Canada without the constant fear of being mistreated or taken advantage.
which happened in London, England, Paris, France, and Valencia, Spain. We are across the globe. Today we are rising up to tell Prime Minister to keep his promise, regularize all migrants, and give status to all. Keep your on the west coast or east coast, or home or back home in another part of the world, dealing with floods, fire, or heat. Our struggles for status are connected to our struggles to save the planet. Forests, forests are on fire. We've all felt the smoke in the air. Our communities are getting flooded. Hurricanes are battering the Atlantic coast right now. And our climate is collapsing because of the decisions made by corporations who only care about making profit. Shame on them. Shame! And as a result, we know so many of our family members, so many workers, so many migrants are forced out of their homes around the world. And when migrants arrive here, migrants are the ones who work in agriculture, in trucking, in forestry, in transportation. They're the ones that are in BC and Northwest Territories escaping the fires. Migrant communities are on the front line of this climate crisis, but the last to get the support to survive. It is critical that we see the connections between our fight for status and the solidarity that's needed to, to bridge this with the climate justice solutions. This is so critical. And so here to also help us make those connections is Caroline. Caroline is a refugee from Nigeria who has been working in Canada as a personal support worker, is a member of the Migrant Workers Alliance, and like Lorda, she's undocumented, but she's not afraid. Welcome, Caroline. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Okay, I don't want to tell you my story because uh, we, all, we all have the same story, I guess. So, no matter our racial differences, I know we all deserve a better life. Can somebody give me a yes? Can somebody give me a yes? You know what? I love wrestling so much, so I'm a fan of Daniel Brown. So, I always want to use this. You know him? If you know Daniel Brown, say yes! Okay, what are we asking for today? Okay, can you give me a yes? Yes! 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 What are we asking for? What are we asking for? Can somebody give me a yes? the right thing. I mean, it's not a big deal. We just want to live a better life, that's it. We just want to be happy. I mean, what, what will it take? I mean, he, he is human. The same blood runs in our veins. I mean, we just need to live this a relaxed life. We've walked a lot and we're still walking. We are helping the, I mean, the, the special needs people, the special needs, and the adults in Canada. I mean, in the medical, in the medical section today, we are all there working, all the migrants here and there. We're doing the right thing. Please, I don't know, I don't know the, the right word to use this time. We're just demanding for what? Status for all. And tomorrow, they are resuming. We just want them to know that we can't wait no longer. Our body is so hot. We need them to do the right thing. We need the Prime Minister to do the right thing. Somebody else give me a yes. 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 What do we need? When do we need this? Why 
I can say. I don't want to go that much because there's so much story to tell. I mean, which is so emotional. Not just me, every other person. We have like millions of migrants out there. They don't even have a place to sleep no more. Of course, if you don't have the permanent resident to maybe to work, you can earn money to pay your rent, to pay your bills. This is a lot. I mean, it's so heartbreaking. It's so emotional. Because before you get to this country, you were told, oh, Canada, it's this. Canada is so nice. If you go there, you don't need to do this. You don't need to pass through this. You get what you want. But when you come to this country, it's a different story entirely. I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody is saying, oh, this, okay, because I'm black, this one is white, this one is red. No, we are all the same. So we just ask him, Trudeau, the Prime Minister, to please listen to our voice and give us permanent residence. So what are we asking for? What are we asking for? When do we need it? When do we need it? So they are resuming tomorrow, we are asking. They should hear our voice. They should listen to us because we are human, because we have families out there. Some of us have not seen the family for the past 13 years, for the past 20 years because of status. I mean, it is not the right thing to do. They should look into this and listen to us. So we are demanding for what? We are demanding for what? When do we want it?
regularization of undocumented people and permanent residence for migrant workers and students. of agricultural worker recently, the United Nations Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of Slavery called it a breeding ground of exploitation. Today, we have with us a very special leader, Gabriel. Gabriel is a farm worker. He lives far away, but for, one, for this one day, he has traveled hours to be here to tell you his story. Gabriel, as he will tell you, has been coming to Canada for 20 years. Let's welcome Gabriel. First, he will go and, um, and sing a song first. That he, okay, Gabriel is going to give us a song that he wrote for Status for All. Let's all give him a round of applause.
chefs, migrant workers harvest food, cook in restaurants, deliver food, take care of children, and the six warehouses the government. We, the government needs to listen to us. We want permanent residents to be with our family that need us and we need them, that we have to live for many years. We ask for permanent residents to have equal rights. We also want a better salary because the minimum wage is not enough to live a dignified life. Just like, just like me and my son, there are almost two million migrants in Canada. We deserve permanent residence to be able to be with our family. We deserve equal rights. We are no machines or no slaves. We are humans treat us like people. Sometimes employer doesn't care how we feel. They just care about the harvest and the products, but forget who harvests the produce. We contribute and do a lot for this country. We know we come to work, but we deserve dignified treatment. Status for all now!
who are citizens of this country. Not only students, but new immigrants in general find it really difficult to land a job because the employers here do not recognize the experiences that we earned back home. We are forced to start from bottom and we are not treated equally. Recently a friend of mine was rejected a job offer because her work permit was on implied status. And even with a valid work permit, majority of the companies are reluctant to hire immigrants as they do not want to invest in the people who cannot commit for a longer period of time. I had trouble finding a part-time job because of the companies who wanted people they can work from to work for them for whenever they need it. To solve these issues and get equal treatment, it is really important for international students to have permanency and permanent residency status. It is time for us to realize our worth and fight for equal treatment. The, the Metro Grocery fight has been a real source of hope and inspiration for me. To be honest, I have never been a part of union, so I did not know how it is going to work, how it is going, how long the strike is going to last and how we are going to manage our money. But once it ended, but when it all ended, going back to home, well, going back to work felt really good and the support and welcome we received from our community and the customers was really motivating. As an international student or an immigrant cannot alone stand against all these profitable organizations, but as a union we can. So let us all hold hands together and push for fairness at both workplace and for immigration status for all. Give it up for Shazia. So we are going to be marching to City Hall. Are we ready to march to City Hall? Canadian workers against migrant workers. 
rights. But this government has been very, very slow when it comes to action. And as unions, we're kind of used to it, to be quite honest. So when this government isn't listening, we will keep going. Even more and more, with more people, more pressure, because united we will make this change. So we keep hearing about the uh, report that the Special Rapporteur had put here. And in the end of that mission, the UN envoy was very disturbed by the fact that many migrant workers are exploited and abused here in Canada. We are not surprised, because you have been telling us, everybody's been telling us, we've been yelling, we've been asking for change, but yet it was surprised because it is a shame to Canada that this is our reality. So we will not stop until we get change. We simply cannot stop because a worker is a worker is a worker. Solidarity, my friends. from all 13 provinces and territories. And I want to say to you, Shaban, even those of us who are not in the union just yet, we are just farm workers for now, care workers and migrant international students. But we are, work, work, we are in the working class, so we, in our hearts, we are with you. We are with you in this labor movement. What are we fighting for? Status for all! Status for all, right? So, because status give us equal rights and more power. You know, sometimes the government says that pathway to PR, like there is a road if we use it, you know, we can get there, we get PR, and you just cross the road. But the government's pathway is not a road, it's a minefield. For example, care workers like me, our pathway means English exams, educational credentials, accreditations, staying with employer for 12 to 24 months, and if we can't, we become non-status. Same with international students. If you can jump all the hoops or you can pay your fees, you become undocumented. You know, like, all international students, on top that they have very, very um, expensive international fees and, uh, and uh, tuition fees to pay, on top of that they have limited hours to work for those fees. How are they, how are they going to pay for those fees, right? In the end, shame! In the end, they will all lose status. Now, let me introduce to you someone who went through that who was mistreated by his boss, as he will tell you. But he found the courage to stand up and he is fighting his boss. He is going to bring us the fire to keep demanding status for all. Deb? Hello, everyone. What do we want? What do we want? So my name is Divyash. I came in 2019 as an international student from India. Now I am undocumented. But I am here today, today to fight for full length permanent residence status for all and together. We won't give up until we win a regularization program for all undocumented people with no cap. I started my journey in this country by having no choice but to work while studying. Why? Because international tuition fees are so high, basic living expenses like groceries, rent, are so expensive. At the same time, wages are low. So many of us are going to classes, hungry, stressed, wondering how I'm going to pay for my tuition fees. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's hard even to focus. International students can only work 20 hours off campus on our study permit. This gives employer power to pay on cash and exploit us. Me personally, I work very hard to pay my tuition fees, doing back-to-back -back shifts and studying. I worked at a gas station. Do you know how much my employers were paying me? It was just $10 an hour. Is it fair? I was undocumented because my employer promised me they're gonna help me to apply for my permanent residency. 
It never happened. And I even paid them money for the application. They paid me $10 an hour for almost three years. And at the same time, I was working long shifts, like 16 hours overnight. And I was shoveling snow, shoveling snow, doing hard work, taking heavy bags of firewood and ice. It was like a machine. I was missing my family at that time. I haven't seen them from last five years. You have heard so many of us that this is what happens when we don't have permanent residency. At start, it's very fearful. But seeing, our, seeing so many people coming out together to get justice and equality in the society, that makes me feel like coming out of a cage. And that's why I'm standing here to fight so that none of us has to suffer what I've been dealing through. Is that we are all here, right? Keep the promise you made and regularize all undocumented people with no exclusions. I believe we're gonna win this fight and we're gonna keep fighting until we win full permanent stations. What do we want? 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 Are you ready to march? Labor, 
behind Climate me. justice fighters, unions, students, refugees, migrant workers, all of us in our communities that are fighting for a just and equitable society. Are you with us? If you haven't gotten involved in our movement, you need to get involved. We need to have everyone involved. But before we uh, talk about the last few things, we have another fighter, someone who stood with us all the way. Please, and it's so fitting that we're outside City Hall. Please welcome Alejandra Bravo, who is the City Councilor for Ward 9, Davenport, who's showing her support. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Gina, and thank you all. I'm so happy that we're here, because you know what? Whether or not you have status, this is your house. Who's house? Who's house? That's right, and at the municipal level, it's so important that we're here, because every day, people aren't able to access basic services. People are shut out from the protections that the state has to offer, and that has to include migrants in Toronto. Is that right?